I, I've said for a while that the Linux space is... I think it takes itself way too seriously. Like, there's a lot of people that it's kind of just... If it's not serious, it's not good. And I just... I want nothing to do with that, basically. I... I... I like making the, like, you know, topical, serious videos and all that, but <clears throat> I feel like the Linux space is, for better or worse, like, five years behind, maybe in this case, like, six or seven, like, years behind the rest of YouTube. Like, if you look at the way that most people make their thumbnails, the way that most people shoot their videos and edit their videos, it's kind of following those trends from quite a while ago. <clears throat> In some ways, that's a good thing, because it does get a around, like, some of the, you know, if you've been and watched, like, mainstream modern YouTube, there is a lot of stuff where it's just, like, this seems like it's garbage for this, and, like, you know, the, the constant zoom-ins and zoom-out. I'll use a zoom-in and zoom-out every so often, but when it's like, oh, what's going on, guys? It's like, stop it. Oh, God, I'm dizzy now. <laughs> Like when it's like that, can we just can we just chill? Like bring it down maybe three or ten levels. Um, I don't mean going that far, but like there is there's a lot less excitement in many of the Linux channels than I would like to see. I try to bring some of that into my own content because that is the style of generally the style of videos I tend to enjoy. Like. Like, one of my, like, right now, one of my favorite channels is, like, Willie Mosman, for example. On the rare occasions, he actually uploads something. Or, uh, Michael Reeves. <clears throat> like, I, I love channels like that. <clears throat> but there's just not that much, <clears throat> there's not that level of, not that level of energy in the Linux space. And I feel like, I feel like it could definitely, it could definitely benefit from <clears throat> more of that being brought in. And I've, as I said, I've been trying to bring some of that into my videos. As, you know, I know I've been making videos for like three or so years or whatever. <clears throat> but I feel like only now I'm, you know, really getting comfortable on camera and really getting used to, you know, especially with the... the I think the podcast really helps. Like, these... <clears throat> I guess... Being more of myself on camera, it's not like I've been using a character all this time i think the the best way to put it is it's kind of like i am <clears throat> i'm acting like brody would act on camera if that makes sense it's not like this is it's not like this is it's a fucking dog i don't know if you can hear it um <laughs> it's like this is this whole separate thing that is nothing like me but it's also not exactly the way that I would like, to, like, if I, I have an idea in my head on, <clears throat> like, how I would like to say something on camera, how I would like to act, things like that, and up until fairly recently, there's always been sort of a disconnect between that, where the idea I have in my head isn't necessarily what ends up, like, appearing on the camera, and the way that I, the way that I will portray myself if that makes any sense. The thing, like, the videos obviously have helped there with the scripted format, but podcasts and live streams also just... The, the thing about that is even though it's a, it's a different format, it's still... Like, the podcast is just me. Like, I will project my voice, you know, slightly differently for the sake of the camera, because otherwise, you know, I'm just... Like, I, I tend to mumble quite a bit. Um, when I'm recording, I try to you know, enunciate what I'm saying a bit more so you guys have any idea what I'm saying. I've already had enough people complain that, like, you know, my accent for some people is a slight... Like, for people that are very English as a second language, where English is, like, they are still very much learning it, have trouble understanding some of the... Maybe not vernacular, but some of the ways I'm... That actually, no, the other thing, that is vernacular. <laughs> like, <clears throat> I I'll act slightly differently on the camera, but I want to bring more of myself into how I'm talking. That's sort of, 
that repetition of doing the streams, doing these podcasts, speaking for hours and hours and hours with a camera and with lights on you definitely has um has helped to like has helped to improve that. Like some people are basically naturals on camera. You like stick them in front of it, stick them in front of some studio lights and everything just goes well. They can speak exactly like they would like in the head and exactly like they would in a regular situation. I found that for whatever reason, when that camera is on me, even if I'm doing like a lot of the time recently, I've been sort of running through parts of my notes prior to recording. But then as soon as I bring the lights on, as soon as I turn the camera on, then things sort of like fall apart a little bit and don't don't click into place the same way. Maybe it's that like that pressure of having the camera there. Or maybe it's just the fact that I don't sleep much. <laughs> that probably doesn't help either. Um it definitely does <laughs> yeah, that definitely doesn't help either. But <clears throat> That that gap has been that gap has definitely been closing over time, and I think especially like one place where it's definitely been getting a lot better, and I feel like it has, I feel like the quality of what I've been putting out has been better is when I have a a guest on the show. A lot of my early episodes with guests on them, like bef- like after I started having uh, people that just weren't just my friends on. I feel like some of those early episodes were a bit rough. I didn't I didn't know how to conduct It's not just a conversation. Like there's certain people I have on the show where it's just a conversation. Like when I bring uh Donald on, when I bring Ren on, I'm just chatting with them. Like I don't treat that like a podcast per se. Like I do have the topics and want to keep things rolling. Um, it's not like, you know, a Discord call with someone where it's like, we just sit there for half an hour not saying anything because we're just focusing on a game or whatever. Um, but it's generally just like chatting shit the entire time, as opposed to having someone like uh, the first episode I had EG on, for example. And usually the first episode I have pretty much any on. I usually conduct that more in an interview fashion trying to get certain questions answered. If, you know, a conversation starts flowing, I'm not going to stop that because usually that ends up being some of the better content that comes out of it. But when I am doing that interview style, that's not a normal way of speaking. So it's something you sort of have to get used to with those extra episodes. And that's another thing where... I think I'm kind of getting it down. I definitely am not good at it. Like, go watch a a good, well-made podcast, like whether it's Joe Rogan or Lex Friedman or anybody else out there that you might enjoy. But I think I'm getting a rough idea of how to actually not just formulate the questions, but order them in a way that makes sense, uh, bridge between certain topics and bring topics back into a direction where I think that they're going to be there's going to be something of interest there. Like I think the episode where that kind of clicked with me the most recently would have been with the last episode that I had Lena on. Like there are a lot of times where I was asking about something and manage to redirect it to like a certain direction where I feel like there would be a really interesting topic, which is not something that not something that I had done in some of those early episodes. Like with the original DT episode. Actually the DT one's an interesting one because <clears throat> because at the time I was like such a big fan of DT. So it's not just me not being used to having guests on. It's also like a kinda I guess Star a uh, starstruck situation, um, because I think that was like episode forty one. Uh, I should bring DT back on. That'll be fun. Um, oh god, oh god, look at these lights. I still have the exact same overlay. <laughs> I think I slightly modified it. But yeah, look, at, I'm so fucking awkward. I don't know what to do. 
Oh, just looking at my face here, it actually, it actually hurts me.